Leo. Welcome to your November 2020 General Tarot reading. It's Raina here. So I'm uh, back using the Wild Unknown Tarot deck and having fun with that. One of my favorite decks to use, especially during Halloween, <laughs> because some of the, this perfect exhibit A, because of some of the drawings. I'm going to put both of these cards here because I picked them at the same time. And so here we go. We'll see what happens. Oh, the one thing, these are matte cards, so I'm like trying to pick up these cards and it's getting a little bit difficult. I think glossy cards are stickier. But this is good cardstock, and that's what I look for. I just got this exact same card for, um, there we go. That's a little bit better. What do you think? For um, Taurus, so that's interesting. Okay, so this is the, these two cards are going to comprise the heart of the matter. So let's look at them at the same time. Four of Cups and two of pentacles it's interesting because there's a self-study program you can do on online it's free i think it's called 19 uh, lessons of the tarot and one of the exercises is reading two cards together and trying to draw connections and uh i looked at the course i didn't actually go through with it but i did get some information from it so <laughs> I guess I'll be doing that on the fly here. So we have the four um, cups, which is a card of emotional um, malaise, kind of like feeling a bit blah, kind of like this grayish um, tone, black and white tone, um, not feeling enthused. And certainly, Leo, you don't like to ever be in that state. Um you're very passionate about life. And when you're not, I always feel like the Four of Cups is a cautionary tale of what happens when you're not living your purpose, when you're doing something for the wrong reason, whether it's staying in a relationship that doesn't move you, doesn't expand you, being a, a Leo, but anybody, everyone has to have that kind of sense of growth in relationships where you feel like that other person is um constantly you know challenging you to grow in different ways um and that doesn't mean that it's always just perfect or smooth sailing it just means that there is some some mutual benefit to the relationship and so then we have here, we can also look at this as elaborating on that. We have the Two of Pentacles, which is a card of duality. And it can be like doing two things, having a lot on your plate, having, you know, having a hectic life style. But there are some people that have hectic lifestyles and it looks on the surface like a lot is going on. They're full of action, but really they're kind of just, as my partner says, moving molecules. He always says that because... Saying like, you know, spinning your wheels, like, you know, your busy work. You're doing a lot, but you're not really accomplishing much. Uh, you're not really getting anywhere. You're just kind of rearranging the, the chairs on the Titanic or something. Um, but also, if you are kind of like, you know, in this hustle mode where you're, you've got two jobs or you're just... Um, doing a lot, you may feel that you're, you're not passionate about any of those things. I guess that's kind of similar to what I'm saying is that there's all the, there might be certain things going on and you just aren't, you don't care. Now this could be two relationships and both of them are kind of like distracting you, but they're not necessarily either one, neither one is, is, um, is fulfilling to you or perhaps um, 
it's an affair that is, yeah, like maybe there's, if you are having an affair, now I'm not saying that you are, but if you are, people do have affairs sometimes. I'm not condoning and I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And if you are, um, it may be distracting. It may lift up your spirits a little bit, but not enough where you are feeling pumped up about life because the four of cups is a an emotional flatness it's like kind of like nothing is really grabbing you at the moment except maybe a per, another person might be grabbing you and it might be okay for that moment but ultimately it's not really doing the trick i'm just going to keep going because <laughs> i could i could come up with a million scenarios in the past position, we have the Son of Pentacles, which is the Knight of Pentacles. Well, this gives a more, I mean, this could be a Taurus, hey, that's that's connected to the Knight of Pentacles. And I told you I got the same uh, card in that, that thing. Now, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. What if this Knight of Pentacles um, is the... Um, the person, because this is a card of reunion, is an ex or somebody who, you know, yeah, like somebody from long ago. And during the Mercury retrograde, this person came back in the picture or you were able to get a hold of them. And that just underscored how unhappy you are in a current relationship. Well, that could be one possibility. Now, the, the Knight of Pentacles is a card of somebody who's really like doing that grind, meaning the work in that workhorse mode. And, you know, there's a time and place for that. That certainly can be uh, something that is good or helpful to your life. But if you are in that mode and you're not, um, in a relationship and you want to be, then that is going to obviously keep you from what you're looking for. But perhaps, yeah, I mean, that could be it as well, is that you might be dissatisfied with your life, but you're a workaholic. And that certainly is true for a lot of Leos. And you're a very romantic sign. So you're like uh, between a rock and a hard place because you can't have it all. You can't have you can't be a workaholic and have and nourish a new relationship. It just, or even a current relationship, it can cause the person's relationship to flounder um, because people don't like to be uh, neglected, even if you're not doing so maliciously. So it's kind of like, you know, getting your priorities straight and really getting clear with yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And you know, once you do that, you're able to um, create a sense of balance in your life, which may be lacking at the moment. The higher message is the High Priestess, which is a card of your higher self, your intuition, that small, still voice within yourself. Um, so... This may be saying as a spiritual message that you need to tune into that, that you need to give time for meditation with the two of pentacles. You may be like kind of here, there and everywhere and not really focused, very harried, very um, distracted and kind of chasing the almighty dollar and not being enough into the spiritual side of life. That's why I was talking about finding that balance. Um, because that will unlock the door to everything in your life. You know, I'm not uh, somebody who is into TM, Transcendental Meditation, but when it was marketed, and even now it's still marketed, because I did go to a, a free lecture not too long ago, I was just curious how they would, you know, promote it. Um, I knew that it was, you know that you had to pay for it and everything like that. But I was just curious what they would say about it and stuff. And, you know, people do these kinds of meditation programs sometimes for material benefits, not, not like law of attraction where they want to conjure up money, but because they believe that if they um, 
train their mind to be more focused, that that will, uh, you know, help them in all areas of their life. Well, I'm talking about something more than just making your mind silent. I'm, I'm talking about with the high priestess trying to extract wisdom from the universe, because maybe you are, if this is work related, maybe you're kind of like spinning your wheels to a certain degree and you don't really know what you want. Maybe that's what the malaise is all about, is that you really haven't given much attention to what you want. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles may be that you just kind of fell into something. You might have just fallen into something and you got into that work grind, but you didn't really ask yourself if that was what you really had, you know, your passion in. Sometimes when people come from a background where... Um, it, I was going to say like a blue collar background, but actually it could be very well a white collar black background as well. If it's a professional type of a, um, an environment where, um, I mean, it could be that, but I think, you know, just this, if you come from a family where working is really you know, the most important thing, you know, the, the most honorable thing. And people take pride in the fact that they work 60 hours a week. And that workaholism is not seen as imbalanced. It's, seen, it's just seen as the person is much more on point than other people who are working less than that, who might be working half that amount of time. So it's it can be like kind of deeply ingrained in a person that you're supposed to work hard in life. And we're not really taught that we have that we have other things that we're supposed to be engaging in as well. You know, things that we, if you're somebody like the typical Leo, you might be very um, creative and maybe you don't want to be an artist for a living, but maybe you're good at painting and other people see that as kind of, frivolous or may you know it's not encouraged and this is what I'm trying to tell you is that you have different facets of yourself don't you know don't just become so narrow narrowly focused on success that you don't realize that other parts of you want to express themselves and so maybe that's what the high priestess can do for you is to kind of get you to expand your your kind of focus um what crosses you is the ace of swords and this can be like being in denial about something but also like i said i was using the word focus because i felt like there might even be a lack of true focus about what direction that you want to go in and just kind of um going with the program or being on that treadmill, that hamster wheel, and you know, that nine to five vibe, which may be very good for you, maybe like something that is right up your alley, but the downside is that it keeps you distracted so that you're not able to really think about other possibilities. And um so you may just be very confused and think, well, I already picked out, I majored in X in college, so this is what I'm going to do, even though you don't really enjoy what you do. Maybe at one time you did enjoy it, and that, that has changed, but you've just kept doing it. Um, so the the only thing I can say about the Ace of Swords in the challenge position is if you want to start to get in touch with yourself again. You know, book an afternoon or a full day for yourself and just take a notebook and, you know, <laughs> I was going to say, go to a cafe. Well, good luck if you can find a cafe that is open. I was, I actually, you know, I walked how long? It seemed like I walked two hours, almost two hours on the near north side of Chicago and finally found an open cafe 
that allowed me to sit on comfortable uh, chairs for the first time in seven months instead of just like, you know, a stool or something like that. And I couldn't believe it. I could scarcely believe it. So if you can find some place like that, take a notebook and start to brainstorm. What is it that I want? Well, you know, what is my dream uh, experience and make it happen or go out into nature if you live in a place and, and kind of get that clarity of thought. This is like a lack of clarity of thought. And then what's coming in is the Daughter of Swords. So here we have another Swords. This is the Page of Swords, and this is in the challenge position. Um, you could be kind of second-guessing yourself, maybe. Um, even um, there's like a par paranoia paranoia with this card in the reverse position. Well, it's not in the reverse position. Did I draw it in the reverse position? I just picked it up and I didn't notice if it was, oh boy. Okay, let me put it this way. Because um, I don't want to stop this recording. It, it'll make a new file. Um, I assume it was in the upright position, which would mean research. See what kind of things you want to do. Um, and it's kind of an extension of the Ace of Swords, um, kind of that advice that is uh, connected to getting clear on what you want. If for some reason I just turned that card over and it was in the reverse position, I don't think it was, but if it was then um, it means that you have to, I think, stop worrying about what other people are doing and stop, you know, concerning yourself with yourself. Um, perhaps, <laughs> I was thinking, if you have the moon in Scorpio, the page of swords in reverse can totally be about that and, and overreacting to other people. Um, basically, with the four of cups, you're unsatisfied about at least one aspect of your life. And so sometimes we use drama to distract us or intrusive thoughts, things that we're obsessed about um, or excessive suspicion that is really trying to create this desire to 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 have a certain outcome like I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense but if you're not happy in your relationship and you start to suspect that your partner is cheating on you and you start to become obsessed with proving that they are the hilarious part about that is that you're not really interested in that relationship what you should be doing is saying I hope they are having an affair because it'll make it even easier for me to leave this relationship and not look like the bad guy. I hope they're distracted with this other person. So why do we do that? Why do we suddenly care? Well, it's the ego. The ego wants what somebody else is having, even if we really didn't want it to begin with, if we were tired of it, or if we realized that it wasn't, it isn't fulfilling to us, all of a sudden it becomes more interesting. So look at how your mind, is it working for you or against you? But if I did get it in the upright position, this is more about doing research um, to give yourself that mental clarity that is currently lacking. Um, also with the Page of Swords, if this is somebody that you are um, wanting to be with, then this person Maybe um, you have to have conversations that are discreet. Maybe you cannot be uh, very um, sloppy in your communication. And not to su suggest that you're cheating on a current partner, um, but simply that you are realizing you know, what's at stake. And the outcome is this card of reunion. This is also a card of commitment to someone. So if, if you really are um, somebody who has felt that you have neglected your relationship because of work, you may make a concerted effort to um, have them...
be able to to um, have a um, renewed relationship so that you and that other person can feel that you are um, respecting each other, valuing is really what I mean, not taking each other for granted. I will say too that for those of you who are single, and this is referring to a potential love interest, um, whether this is somebody who you've had an on again, off again relationship, maybe distance is keeping you apart or something like that. Um, there is going to be a solar eclipse in your fifth house of romance in December. So that's like new beginnings on steroids with love or creativity. Like I said, um, Perhaps that has something to do. Maybe you're going back to a um, creative project that you neglected for your you know, practical life. But th this could be a card of reunion, somebody from your past that is the one that got away <laughs> coming back into your life and you feeling that it was worth the wait. Maybe it was worth all you had to go through as evidenced by the Four of Cups. So that's what I have for you, Leo. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like a personal reading, I am primarily an astrologer. And um, you can check me out at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.